to Simply Local. We're taping at the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Center, Cabarrus County. I'm Pam Ooten, Family and Consumer Science Agent. And I'm David Goforth with Simply Local here. All right, Pam, uh, I went out to the freezer and I found about 10 packs of deer burger. Did you say deer? Deer, yes, deer. And I said, I need to learn how to make meatloaf. So I got with you and you had a meatloaf recipe from your Cook Smart curriculum. Cook Smart, Eat Smart. Cook Smart, Eat, eat smart, smart curriculum, okay. And first thing it said was onions. These are some of my uh, homegrown onions actually. And they're looking a little pitiful this year. They had some dry <laughs> weather. This is one reason we say 10% local because oh. we said 100% local during years like this, we might go hungry. Oh. So just 10% uh, local is what we're asking you for. And anyway, these onions, we'll use them. Uh, you can count and go on up here and use some of the green. I uh, don't want to get that in there, but you can keep slicing. I'm going to stop right there and grab this other one here. Now, I'm going to cook meatloaf, but uh, I like to put onions in meatloaf. It just tastes better to me. I, I don't don't do it without the onions. You oh, could. onions add flavor to everything. Yeah. So uh, I've seen recipes people using carrots and uh, celery both in meatloaf. I reckon that'd be okay. I've never tried that, but uh, I'll just stick with onions and chop those onions up fairly good. David. I thought we were doing meatloaf. I didn't know we were doing deer loaf. Good heavens. Well, we got to keep it local. This this deer was from Gaston County, actually. Oh, so okay. That makes it local. And I keep asking David, you know, not everybody in Cabarrus County has access to deer meat. Yeah. Uh, you can use other types of meat, any type of ground meat, whether it's a uh, pig or deer or uh, beef. In fact, we have used, we sometimes use all three of those together. Oh, I bet that's sort good. Of a, it is a very delicious three meat uh, meatloaf. Oh, that's my wife's dish. I just do the deer. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, we'll start with that. And let me show you how. Now on the deer, uh, most of the deer I try to cut into steak, but there's uh -huh. parts of the deer that don't work for steak. And I normally grind that. You can make a little bit of stew with it, but normally grind that. Use this postal tape when I run out of freezer tape. A postal <laughs> tape will work. Strapping tape will work. Freezer tape. Freezer tape, ideal. Ideal, okay. Uh, and air is the enemy of meats in the freezer, and you see how I've folded that together right there. I've done two things. I, I folded it up like this. I folded it real tight like this. And I've got uh, two, I do that twice actually. And you're using freezer paper. And this is freezer, freezer paper. paper, yeah. Uh, you could use a cheaper one without side. I just use straight freezer paper you can purchase in local stores here. And that looks delicious there. So we will add that. And I gotta take this out to the wood stove and burn it or my wife gets mad. So uh, really, anyway, okay. yes, there we go. Uh, now, in addition to this, we want uh, some type of binder and your a uh, recipe called for breadcrumbs, I believe. Uh, I don't happen to have breadcrumbs on hand, but I do have some of these whole wheat crackers, which I will crumble some of them up in there. Okay. And like so. Now, let me sort of get this mixed a little bit here, and then I'll put some of the liquid in here. Well, we've got to buy, I think my mom used oatmeal on her recipes. Well, a lot of people use breadcrumbs. Some people even buy panko breadcrumbs. Uh, salting cracker breadcrumbs, mm -hmm. and of course that egg you're going to be using too in a few minutes is going to help bind the meatloaf together. All right. That's one of the main functions of the egg, as a matter of fact, bind food together. All right. Well, we'll add the egg that you're talking about here, and crack it over here. Make sure it's not bad. You taught me that, Pam. Thank you, David. All right. But then we dump it right back in here. We got two dishes to watch. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> And now a little bit of this 96% fat-free milk. 96% fat-free milk. Yep. How much are you adding? Uh, enough you? to make it sort of soupy. Okay. <laughs> that looks like about a cup or so. I think so. Okay. You're the one that gave me the recipe, Pam. Well, this is true, but David, you're making a lot of variations. <laughs> a little bit of a variation there. Here, there. Under. That to me looks about the right consistency. Are you happy with that, ma'am? I'm happy with it, David. Now, we don't have, with the crackers, we don't have a lot of flavor. Mm -hmm. I like a little bit of pepper mm -hmm. and uh, a little bit of salt. Mm -hmm. These are optional, of course. And of course, this is the other place you could put a favor. You know, if you do the stuffing mix, they normally have herbs flavoring with them, so you wouldn't have to do this, but you can use. Then that was just a minimal amount that you added. 
It was, yeah. It's mostly, you want to taste the meat here. Now, the other thing that uh, people will talk about is adding fat to this. Mm -hmm. And if you're used to eating lean meat, you don't need to add the fat. You don't need your mouth greasy. Uh, you can just use the deer. Works very well if you're used to lean meat. Now, if you're not used to lean meat, uh, perhaps you wouldn't enjoy it as well. But to me, it, it takes a while to get used to the flavor of lean meat if you've been eating regular meat but I have got to that point. I have sprayed this. This is a loaf pan. This looks about the right size. Mm -hmm. You can use glass mm -hmm. if you had a little bit more, but I use a smaller uh, loaf pan. Mm -hmm. You could put it in, in little individual patties. Yes. They would cook faster. Uh, you always like to do things fast. Right, and our Cook Smart Eat Smart classes, we make five small meatloaves, and they, uh, small, five small meatloaves, mm -hmm. and they cook so much faster because we're on a really tight schedule in that class. Pam, I'm going back and mentioning something that I okay. meant to mention. Uh, it's very critical with deer meat like this when you've ground it yourself that you let it thaw in the refrigerator oh, uh, just okay. for food safety. The Typically when you're processing meat yourself, you can do a better job than I think the meat that comes through us in the stores, but yet and still there's still a risk. Uh, it actually, is, the risk profile is a little bit different for stuff that you're processing yourself. And so be sure that you let that hamburger uh, thaw in the refrigerator, I mean, yeah, in the refrigerator uh, and not on the counter overnight or something like that. Halted. I have to say something here, David. Uh, we don't recommend thawing any meat overnight on the counter or gotcha. yep. letting it thaw on the counter. So this is just what we really should be doing for, for food everything. safety. Right. Okay. But you're really emphasizing and the importance of thawing it in the refrigerator exactly. with the deer meat We've that you that. processed. Uh, and the other thing I don't like to do is to thaw meat in the microwave. It can be done, but with deer meat, I've turned it rubbery a number of times. To me, I always try to make the point of thawing it in the refrigerator. refrigerator. Okay. So, you got any tricks for thawing it in the microwave? I mean, can you do it in the microwave? Well, you know, you could put it on lower heat. Lower uh, heat would make it perhaps a little bit less uh, tough, more tender. But I think if you're recommending it to be thawed in the refrigerator, let's go Let's do that. that. All right. Now, the topping, and I saw all kinds of ways to do the topping here, but this is a simple one. I put a little bit of uh, mustard here, and about three times that much ketchup. And you're using Dijon mustard. I don't know if that makes a difference to you. I don't know either. Okay. We'll find out. All right. We? <laughs> so you're putting in a good about amount. three times as okay. much of uh, that. And now you can put in some sugar, but what I've done is I've got some of my sorghum syrup here, Pam. Oh, what a treat! This is homemade sorghum syrup. You know, give it a little bit different profile, and I'll put some of that in in lieu of the sugar that a person could use if you don't want to buy any of my sorghum. All right. And David, now. you're really going local today, aren't you? Trying to be local. Yep, it's a local show. Now I want to mix this together. You could just use barbecue sauce here. I've seen people just put uh, just salsa. Just plain ketchup. Or ketchup. Salsa. Yeah. Normally, the ones I eat in the uh, restaurants and stuff have a little bit of the mustard in there, uh, best I can tell. Okay. There we go. And now, put that out here. So how often do you make deer meat loaf for your house, for your family, for your wife? Well, I just started when you gave me the recipe the other week. Oh, so this is like an experiment. Almost. Okay. The thing about experiments is you can eat your mistakes you when you're cooking. You can eat your mistakes, that's yeah, true. Yeah, cooking experiments, you can eat your mistakes. So this is a learning experience for you. Yes. But here we go. That is ready to go in the oven. And it's very critical to get this heated to the right uh, amount. You could even use the thermometer to get to Instant the 160 read. degrees. Yes. But uh, typically what I've found is if I get it up at 300 or 350 degrees and leave it for an hour, it is well done at that point. And I don't have any additional concerns about food safety at that point. So off to the other one we go. Okay, suggesting 350 for an hour. Ah. There is one that is done. It looks delicious. It is. Uh, guarantee it will be. Let me show you another little thing that my wife does here uh -huh. is we have a pan that has drainage holes here. And Great. the grease will actually drain out of the bottom here. Mm -hmm. We'll feed that to the dogs, right? Or you make gravy and eat it anyway, right? We feed it to the dogs a better choice. Okay. Let's move onward, David. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, we want to show you that. And ready to cut this up and eat it. Isn't it fun to cook local? 
It is so much fun to cook local and eat smart. And David, if this is your last show, I have to say it's been a real experience <laughs> to partner with you on doing Simply Local. I'm glad we could. I'm glad we got these shows out there, Pam. I've learned a lot, and I think everyone's learned a lot, and maybe you've even learned some I food have. safety. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Pam.